Once again, let's roll it over carefully. <clears throat> Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's the 25th of January, and we've got an amazing group of people here with us tonight. Um, an amazing group of National Writing Project folks um, who are going to talk about the work they plan to do uh, next week, next Wednesday, February 1st, on the National Digital Learning Day. Um, and then, of course, we'll just go off and talk about whatever we'd like to talk about here. Um, Paul O. helped us connect this. Uh, Paul, do you want to say hello first and tell us briefly how the Writing Project got involved? What's, what's up with uh, Digital Learning Day? And then we'll introduce folks as we go here. Sure. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. My name is Paul O, and I'm with the National Writing Project. And Digital Learning Day is uh, really an effort to um, make visible the, the, the great work, the innovative work that is happening in schools around the country. Um, and it's also a, a, an invitation as well to really engage with um, digital learning work if that's not something as an educator that um, you know you've really um, uh, that you have lots of experience in so it's both uh, an opportunity to showcase and um, an opportunity to um, really try something out uh, it's it, it's a, an effort that was started by the Alliance for Excellent Education and we are a core partner in this work the National Writing Project is and um, as a core partner, we've been uh, we've been sharing resources from some of our web spaces, like Digital Is, um, with the folks at the Alliance, and you can find those at digitallearningday.org. I will um, I'll put that in the chat room. Mm -hmm. And uh, additionally, we've been doing some work with some of our partners, you know, who we like to have fun with, um, as we did on the National Day on Writing, like Figment. Um, which is a, a youth, um, well, and actually adult um, writing and publishing site. Uh, we're also doing work with the New York Times Learning Network. Uh, they're going to be publishing some resources from their space, um, you know, closer to February 1st, which is Digital Learning Day, and also Edutopia. They've um, published some resources for teachers. Um, and as well, there are a lot of events that are happening on February 1st. Um, you know, there are people on tonight who will be talking about that. There are things happening in classrooms and then, uh, you know, more organized kinds of um, get togethers of large groups in places like Sacramento, California. There are a number of states that are involved in this effort. Um, and I would say that for us, this just really is an exciting moment, um, us being the National Writing Project, because I think, you know, as as um, is evidenced by the amazing educators on this on this uh, broadcast, you know, this is really an opportunity for us to showcase some of the great work that is happening around the country. And um, you know, the only other thing that I would say is that uh, we are really hoping that people get on social media spaces like Twitter. Um, and use hashtags like DL Day uh, to also push out, you know, resources for others to use. Um, you know, if you're a youth, uh, to showcase some of your digital artifacts, your digital compositions. Um, and, you know, as we all know, um, writing is just such a critical piece of what we know is happening online for youth today, both in and out of school. So the, the more that we can make that visible, through our social media spaces, you know, the better. And um, one last thing, too, is I invite people to blog at Digital Is. You know, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of our network of teachers, uh, in fact, many of the people on this call tonight have been adding blog posts to the Digital Is site, you know, really documenting their practice, um, their ideas about Digital Learning Day, and, um, you know, really having a good time, I, I would say. And I think that's a big part of it, too, is really to have a good time. And if you don't get enough tonight, um, and we hope you won't, um, please uh, join Blog Talk Radio tomorrow as well, right? What time is that on, uh, Blog Talk Radio? Yeah, that's right. N NWP Radio on Blog Talk Radio, um, and I'll put the link out for that too. That's on at 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern. 
uh, we have another great show. Um, Gail actually will be on that program as well. And um, we have some other educators and actually a youth from Figment will be on talking about the importance of, um, of doing online writing in a space that is collaborative and social. Um, and one in which, you know, there's a whole lot of other figs. That's what they're called, figs at Figment. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a great program. Troy Hicks, author of the Digital Writing Workshop, and um, one of the co-authors of Because Digital Writing Matters will be on. All right. So how's that for a lot of? Uh, That's a lot going on. Mar marketing, marketing. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so we have uh, some friends with us tonight. Old friends, new friends. We have um, Natalie Bernasconi. Did I say that right, Natalie? Say your last name for me. No. You have to hold your fingers together and say Bernasconi. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Um, we have uh, Gail Desler is trying to get with us here. I don't know if she is with us or not. We, yeah, I've been texting her. She like, we she turned off her video feeds in yeah. the hopes of um, you know having less bandwidth drain because she's got a weak signal. But okay. I'm not seeing her profile picture right now. So well, you you might have to represent sure. there. We'll figure that out. Andrea Zellner is with us again. Uh, a friend of Andrea's, Lee Wolf, is with us. You'll introduce yourself. Tom Fox is with us. Um, Jack Zangari, Zangari, sorry, I think you <laughs> tried to get me to That's say right. that correctly. And Matt Dunlevy, Levy. Um, Chris Sloan is with us. Uh, Chris, help us make all this happen. Don't know how you're all going to jump in, but please, um, you know, we. this is totally unscripted, totally open conversation. So tell us first, I'm just going to throw out a question. What does DL Day mean to you? And what are you planning to do? Who wants to jump in on that? Um, be, be, may I just jump in to say that sure. Gail ahead, is having trouble getting back in? Is there, have we maxed out? And, or is there, a, can we make some space for her? She's trying to get back in and she's not able to. So throwing that out. Uh, she ought to be able to. Uh, okay. Although, it looks like. And um, can I say something about the echo that's going on right now? Yeah. Yes, please. Gail's here. Hi, Gail. Gail, are everybody you there? has headsets, right? Yeah. Uh -uh. If you don't, you should get some headsets Hi, if Chris. you can. Gail, are you here? Hi, Gail. I am. Um, okay. You're fine. I, and I, I can hear there's quite a delay, too. So I'm, unfortunately, our phone line is down, and I'm on a really weak wireless. Okay. But you seem fine right now. Gail, why don't you, in, in case you have to leave, why don't you um, jump in and tell us what's Digital Learning Day mean to you, and what are your plans? We'll start with you. Okay. Well, I'm um, in the room with uh, Natalie. Mm -hmm. And we'll be head. We'll be um, virtually together down, and we'll be down in Sacramento downtown. Joining, I'll be bringing a team of teachers from my school district, and joining other writing project teachers, and um, sharing a project I've been working on called uh, Digital ID. And it's a project we started last summer, and it's a digital citizenship project. And Natalie will tell you more about what she's doing, and you'll probably hear her a lot better. But we have a, a wiki set up with um, resources for the teachers. Yeah. Uh, tell us the URL for that. And um, one more technical note here. Hopefully, nobody is trying to listen to the live stream at the same time. If you are, please turn that off. That's people in the Hangout. How do you see? If I don't think anybody. Oh is. well, how do you know if you're doing that? <laughs> you would have gone and turned the live stream on. You're good though. Don't worry about it. But let's keep going a little bit. Um, Natalie, okay. do you want to jump in? Tell okay. us about your perspective. What what this project is, and what's the URL for that wiki that you set up? Right. Um, Digital. Okay. I hear you better. Yeah. Um, the, it's digital dash id dot wikispaces dot com. Okay. 
Tell us about it. It's it's amazing. It's a it's the brainchild between Gail and I, with a lot of infusion from a lot of teachers and a massive amount of research that we've done. I have to say, for the record, Gail has done the lion's share of the work, but we had our collaboration together of being able to explain, you know, to investigate what does this mean to the classroom teacher, what are the issues facing a classroom teacher to be able to integrate this curriculum into their content areas. And um, we came up with four different foci, fo uh, focus, uh, four different themes that we pulled out that um, we built cu curriculum around and support around. And the first one is about stepping up, you know, where you're, you have a choice of roles that you play, whether you're a victim or a bully or a bystander or an upstander. So the first one is talking about what it means to stand up or speak out or step up, all those, you know, being proactive um, mm -hmm. and in trying to make the world a better place. The second one focuses on building identities, having a, a good digital footprint. The third one talks about boundaries, respecting um, intellectual uh, property and respecting copyright. And the fourth one discusses online privacy, where you're respecting your own boundaries. So we have these four areas on this um, on this wiki, and with um, resources drawn from Common Sense Media, um, just a huge variety of, of um, sources that, and it's also designed for students, so teachers can send their students into the site to start getting educated about some of the the issues facing them and and different ways, proactive ways that they can deal with them. And my piece for Digital Learning Day, it was a great opportunity to kind of um, showcase some of the, the way we're integrating curriculum. I've had my eighth graders, I'm, I'm in Salinas, um, in a Title I school, but we're blessed that we have a one-to-one -one netbooks um, in, a, in an avid academy. And I had my students do research on, um, we called it Gallery of Heroes, where they had to do research on a person with at least three public sources of information. So through that, I was able to infuse, you know, copyright and uh, intellectual property. And they did research about people who've stood up in, in history and in contemporary times. And then from that, I'm moving them to their own stories. And that was the digital writing we did there their own stories of stepping up. And and Gail is going to be um, helping me share that in Sacramento, some of my students writing and celebrating that. And I, I really honor Digital Learning Day because it's enabled me to start so many conversations in my district and so many conversations with my county office of ed and of course with my own team of teachers about, I love the theme of um, try one new thing. And I'm just challenging my staff, you know, here's a bunch of resources. Find a video that complements your curriculum on February 1st. Um, you know, try something you haven't done before. And, and it's been really, you know, I call it just kind of a low risk thing where they can try something and push themselves. So I really welcome the conversation. I'm grateful to be part of this panel and I think I'm done. <laughs> great introduction, thank you. That was great. Who wants to jump in? So I'm going to be um, down in Sacramento at the same time. This is Tom Fox. Go ahead. And this is Tom Fox. And um, I uh, work for the National Writing Project. But today I'm here just as a classroom teacher. I'm a teacher consultant for the Northern California Writing Project. And I teach college writing. And uh, I, I got thrown into this really interesting first year comp class that has 100 students in it. Which sounds bad. Sounds bad. Yeah, it does. But it isn't. Because um, I also have like nine upper division uh, credential students who are mentors. And they're mm. fabulous. So it gets split mm. up. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my class, just like an assignment sequence that is uh, pre inquiry. And um, the only bounds are you have to have a burning curiosity about what you're studying. That's cool. And you have to have um, uh, a sense that this is an issue of common concern. 
so it can be really idiosyncratic. But other than that, all topics are open. Did you say common so, concern, but it can be idiosyncratic? Okay. It cannot be an idiosyncratic. Oh, can't be. Okay, got it. Can't Go ahead. be. Okay. Yeah. It has to be interesting to someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, they start by just uh, roaming the public world of discourse. And they find things. They pick up things, and they annotate them. And these annotations are posted on a web page for everybody. And they have to do three of them each. And I have 100 students. So there's 300 of them up there for everybody to see. And the idea is that you take somebody else's idea. Uh, you start with somebody else's interests. Um, so you don't necessarily annotate your own topic. You, you get to look at 300 ideas and say, what do I care about the most? So, so, so one of the things I believe is that um, good writing comes from good topics. Like if you have a crappy topic, no matter how well you what to do about it. Because there's junk in the space, and we won't be able to do what we're doing right now unless they clean up the space, the, the space junk, because it's got our satellites and everything. So it's a huge problem. So what do you do about space junk? Um, I got one. I got someone writing a, a, a graphic novel about court-ordered mandatory mandatory family therapy. Does it work? I just thought great. all this stuff was so interesting. So um, they get all these topics, and then they have to do a pretty traditional lit review, like find some other sources on your inquiry, put them together, tell me what the conversation is about this topic. And then they have to research it some more and decide what they're going to do about it. And they write a proposal. And in the proposal, they have to decide what media they're going to use, what genre in that media, what their audience is, what their purpose is, and how they're going to do it. Um, it's really open. And they, they do all kinds of things. They do web pages. They do graphic novels. They do um, ignites, like I show them those ignite things. Uh, so the guy on Space Junk did an ignite. It was kind of cool. They do fake TED Talks. Um, you That's know, we great. just, all of this stuff. And so I wanted to, I don't know if we have time, but I was going to show you briefly just um, one of the web pages. So I'm going to try this share screen thing. Good. Let's that somebody it. did, um, and I'll put it up and see if it works. I press the button. It's not working yet, but we're trying it. It's cool. You can keep any any responses while this is coming up. Yeah. I I was I had a question. Their yeah. annotations. You said they were posted up for everyone to see, but I right. missed the part of what what format is that? Like literally on the wall, or is it in some shared Google Doc, or what? It is on a oh, web page. There's an earthquake. We just had an earthquake here. That's weird. Oh, okay, wow, that's I'm sorry. Exciting. Go ahead. Finish uh, up. It is posted on a class web web page. There we go. It's coming. Okay. This is Alyssa's. Fabulous web page, and her topic was, "Can when you put a monetary value on our friend, our relationship with nature?" That, which is a great question, and I didn't know how she was going to answer it. And then she did all this research, and there's a whole bunch of people who have tried to answer that question. And so she found, um, just briefly, she found all of these other projects, like uh, UK NEA, which isn't like changing right now, or the National Capital Project. It's beautiful. And there's text all over here. You know, if you're, you know, if people are worried there's not enough writing going on. Um, I mean, look at this. I was so <coughs> impressed with these projects. And so I'm going to uh, unshare this. It goes on. I'll share this URL and you can take a look at it. Um, but. They were, um, they were like amazingly good. And one of the things that I think made them good uh, was that I really lowballed the assignment. Like I said, take a risk. 
I'm not going to punish you for trying something you don't know how to do. And, and I didn't. Um, but they were like three times better than I thought they were. And I didn't give them very much points in the class or anything. I think it was they were really invested in their topic. I think they really decided what they were going to do and why. And then put a lot of time in it. John, so that's what I'm going to share on Digital Literacy Day. That was my question. Beautiful. How are you going to do that? Well, we have a we kind of have a showcase model, and uh, I'm going to bring my laptop and I'm going to stand by it, <laughs> and I'll give a short introduction to people as they come around, and then show what my students can do. Did you share that link, Tom? I haven't yet, but I will. What was that in? Was that just a website? It was in a Wix. Yeah, it was a website. And I'll share it right here. So, Tom, let's hear from some yeah. others, and then you can jump yeah. back in as we go here. Who, who would like to talk about what they're going to be doing or thinking about doing? I'd be happy to go. Great. Introduce yourself, please. Welcome. So my name is Matt Dunleavy, and I'm an assistant professor at Radford University in southwestern Virginia. Can everybody hear me okay? We can hear you well. Go ahead. Great. So uh, I've been working with uh, the Harvard Graduate School of Education um, to create augmented reality stories. Um, and for those of you who are wondering what augmented reality is, basically it's a way to embed the physical environment um, with media that you interact with through your smartphone. So if you can envision uh, Tom's project or Natalie and Gail's project uh, where you know, students actually go out into the physical environment. And in the, in the case of Natalie and Gail's project, they would go on interactive missions where they had to you know, do something in their physical communities um, with their smartphone. So um, it's, a, it's a cutting edge project. We actually developed the software to create your own augmented reality stories through a National Science Foundation grant uh, and we're now about to uh, take it onto the commercial market but uh, for Digital Learning Day um, the Harvard team is actually going to be sharing a video that's going to be uh, shown I think at 9 a.m. on February 1st uh, but it's a four minute video and I'd like to possibly try showing it right now <laughs> if uh, I'm not sure we'll be able work. to hear it um, yeah, okay. Start well, it. Start it. Let's see um, what happens. Go for it. Yeah, the, the, let's see if the audio or the echo feedback is too great. But I'll try it, and if it's bad, just give me the thumbs down and we'll change it out. We'll try it. Go for it. Are you going to share a screen, or how are you doing this? There we go. I see it. There we go. So can you see that? Yep. Uh -huh. Well, for a minute we did. I don't know what happened. Yes. Yep. Yes. Ingo Mobile is a program we've been developing for middle school students uh, that helps them to connect what they're learning in the classroom with the real world experience. So they've been able to work in the classroom in their science class with a multi-user virtual environment where they explore a virtual pond and they act like that. I can't tell if you guys can we're, see that. We're good. Not. Keep going. We're good. Yep. We can see it. Scientists to collect information about an ecological mystery that's happened in the, at the virtual pond. But then now we've developed EcoMobile to allow the students to take some of the pieces that they're learning about in the classroom and learn more about them in the real world. So we've developed an augmented reality game that the students can play on smartphones using a 3G wireless network at a real pond. So as the students move around the real environment, they um, encounter hotspots. And at the hotspots, there is information that connects with what they were learning in the classroom. Things like what's a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer, or uh, allows them to take measurements of the pond um, to test its water quality. The students uh, have been coming out with us to the pond environment and going on field trips and using a lot of producers. I see a lot of green and all of these plants and trees are producers. Yeah. 
the kids have been very excited to use the smartphone devices and it's amazing to see how quickly they can pick it up and use it with full capacity. Um, it took a very short introduction for the kids to be able to navigate with the device and to access these hotspots. And they were figuring things out and troubleshooting together. They were, it was really fun to see them work together to solve some of the problems that they were encountering. And, and you know, one student might not quite understand how uh, something worked, and another student was right there to help them. Uh, think experiences that rival what, what real scientists do, and they, they realize that. And they see um, things about the water quality and start to understand what this means for, um, you know, we've had a lot of rain in the last few days. They're connecting the fact that the rain might affect what's happening in the pond and what's happening in their local environment. So they're starting to understand that, that the things that happen in the world are affecting things very close to their homes. The higher the more cloudy, the more cloudy in the Matt, are so, you? Yeah, go ahead. So basically what, um, and I've, I've tried to stop sharing the screen. Let's see if it'll work here. And it you can takes see a my minute. Face again. We have you again. Welcome. Okay. It, so basically what we've created is, an, is a storytelling platform that enables you to create interactive mobile stories that students interact with and experience on their smartphones. Um, the example from the video I just showed is a, a scientific inquiry example, but uh, I think the real power of, of what we've created is anybody can create whatever story you want. So we've created um, alien landing scenarios, we've created historical story scenarios, um, we've created campus tours, and what we're most interested at this point is to really figure out, it's a brand new way to tell story. Um, how, what are some stories that we can tell where people are interacting with each other, interacting with their environment in, in real ways. And it really is a very exploratory stage we, we are at right now. So that's, that's what we're doing. Wow. Matt, cool. can, can you go back a step and tell us how you, got, you personally got to this project out of your own teaching? Sure, yeah. I was um, I taught American literature um, in an 11th grade high school classroom, and I was involved with the Tidewater Writing Project very early on, uh, where I was really just kind of the tech support for the, the project and became involved that way. Uh, and then I, I pursued a PhD and was able to actually um, work up at Harvard. I had a fellowship when we studied augmented reality, and then I came down to Radford, and that's that's how I became involved with the writing project as well as with the, the technology side. And now I'm kind of dovetailing them together a little bit. Great. So what's DL day for you? I mean, you're gonna be able to show the stuff off there, but what do you think it means in, in a bigger way in some way? Does that make sense? Yeah, for me, for me it's a, I, I think it's a way for us to nationally just share what's going on there's so many neat things going on across the country and, and very often we become siloed and we don't really know what's going on uh, and, and so digital learning day for me is a way to learn about some of the amazing projects that I, I'm hearing on this panel and, and a way for me to share our story so that we can all start to work together and um, you know thank you for having me. Great welcome. Who wants to jump in next? Welcome whoever. <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead, Lee. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Please. Uh, my name is Lee Griswold. I'm a um, the program director of the Master of Arts and Educational Technology program at Michigan State. I was uh, introduced to Digital Learning Day and the National Writing Project stuff via Andrea Zellner, who I work closely with. Um, and live just about a mile down the street from as well, <laughs> uh, just by coincidence. Um, and what we've decided to do for Digital Learning Day is have our uh, master's uh, community share what they're doing. Three of the, the, the three tenets of our program are create, explore, and share. So it really dovetails quite nicely into our sharing part, which is something that a lot of times uh, teachers either don't make time to do or are sometimes afraid to do. So we really want to push our uh, the wonderful work that our students uh, who are teachers are doing 
in a forum. <laughs> Andrea has posted a link here to our Tumblr. We're going to have them just share little bits. We're asking them to try something new and share the story of what they did. So it could be just something super duper simple and uh, or it could be something complex. And someone earlier in the chat had asked if uh, we're doing this if anyone is doing Digital Learning Day with people that are not teachers, and there's a handful of students in our program who are um, who are not in the K-12 community, and so we want this Digital Learning Day to, to be just very global and, and generic, not necessarily with students alone or with our teachers alone. Um, I actually, right before a meeting here, helped my mom set up her iPhone, and I'm going to encourage her to share her story on our Tumblr as well, just so we can just start from all different aspects of, of digital learning, uh, sharing stories to collect. Andrea, anything to add there? I, it's a half an hour gonna, really... until this is over, love. <laughs> Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. <laughs> um, I was just going to add that at Red Cedar, too, we're putting things out um, within our own community at the Red Cedar Writing Project at Michigan State University that we're sharing things on our listserv with one another. And also, I think the importance of making the work really visible and public is important. I also uh, pers personally, I am teaching this semester online, but I also uh, wanted to explore what it's like to be a digital learner. So I've been, um, I'm going, I tracked yesterday, but I don't know if that's the day I'm going to write about. I'm just tracking every day all the things I learn via digital means. And I intend to sort of curate that a day in a life of a digital learner. So I thought that, you know, even if you aren't teaching or in the classroom, to highlight the way that we're all learning in digital ways, I thought would be a fun way to go about it. What are you teaching online as well? You mentioned quickly. Yeah, I um, teach the capstone course for all of the Masters of Art students. So the Masters of Ed and the Masters of Ed Tech. And they create online web portfolios as their final project for their Masters at MSU. So that's the class. So it's saturated with digital learning, basically. It's the full culmination of all of their digital work over the course of their master's degree. Are they still as passionate as Tom's students are about their work? Passionate. I think, you know, it, I think that they are passionate. I think they're also very reflective, hmm. too, because they spend time looking back at where they began the program and also how far they've come and I think that that's what's so remarkable uh, they also we ask them to look at how they reflect on their statement that they wrote to get into the master's program and they also project their future as a learner and those are my favorite ones they write these essays about what they're going to do with their new knowledge having come through a master's program experience and it's really inspiring that's my favorite so, Lee and um, uh, Andrea, what are you actually doing next Wednesday? Like, how to celebrate this? Or is there a, an event or or no? Oh, Lee, I think you're muted. No, oh. <laughs> she was. I was wondering why isn't she talking? As being a good digital citizen. <laughs> um, Welcome back. So. Okay, I'll take these out. Um, gotcha. What we're doing is we, we've already started communicating with our, our students and tweeting now. We've got a pretty um, large group on, on Twitter that follows us, our, our students. We make it part of a requirement that they do that. And so we're um, asking them to start to share stories now, and then we'll be using the hashtag and sharing those stories um, all through the day, so sending those out kind of through the, the Twitterverse. And then I think Andrea and I had talked about having a, a face to face meeting or sort of an informal lunch uh, with our people that are, are actually there with us face to face. And then we'll also do some learning and sharing together at that time. 
I have a secret <clears throat> wish on that day to do a, another flash hack jam like we did at NCTE. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll have to see. The problem is on Wednesday I have class all day, so it's very hard for me to find um, time because I'm actually like sitting in a non-digital class all during the day for my own personal learning. So that's a little difficult <laughs> to find the time to celebrate. <laughs> Jack, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you'll be doing in your, your you're an eighth grade teacher, is that right? Welcome. Yeah, um, my name's Jack Zangerly. I'm the eighth grade English teacher at Dover Middle School in Dover Plains, New York, about 100 miles uh, north of New York City. And I'm also a teacher consultant with the Hudson Valley Writing Project. And I'm sort of looking forward to Tuesday coming up. I was really thinking about some of the things we've been doing for the past couple of years in class digitally that have been more or less private. Um, we do a lot of work with Google Docs and like I think over the last three years or so we've really gotten close to a place where it's almost a paperless classroom of sorts, you know. We have fairly regular access to laptops in the room and things like that. So we've been doing a lot of um, one of the things that really works has been blogging about the books they're reading as part of their reading workshop and sort of interacting and talking with each other uh, about the books they're liking. And But it's always been sort of behind this closed wall where it's been just the kids in the class and they're the only ones that could see it. And we got to talk early. Uh, so everybody right now is in the process of polishing and cleaning and getting things ready to like a happy place that they're ready to let the real world see um, and sort of bring it to like this other audience that they're not really used to. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because one of the things that we really started to see is they go to the places where they're blogging about their books with each other before for recommendations and things that they're interested in reading before they go to other places. If they're more interested in, you know, I know you read this, what did you think about it? Here's we could talk about it for a few minutes or, you know, comment on each other back and forth and then sort of move forward. And that's just something that I was always really fascinated about seeing. Mm -hmm. So like moving that into another place and we're going to try to connect with a high school teacher and sort of bridge that between the middle school and high school a little bit as part of expan the initial expansion process of that. Um, so that's sort of where we're going for Tuesday. And um, just for myself, just trying to think a little more carefully about exactly, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm trying to, you know, use the different tools and what that means sort of in this world we live in. What's the so URL the for the blog where your students work will be? The We're public. deciding that this week. There's all there's all sorts of debate about the public name right now. That's okay. very what? much something where we've set Friday for the decision on that. Well, let us help you. What we'll are some of the options? Up. What's that? What are some of the options? Let us help you. Um, they want they the word books, the word blog, and dragons because that's our, our mascot are sort of need to be somewhere in there. So those are the kind of things they're kicking around. Um, tomorrow, I have two uh, two young ladies who are going to be bringing in uh, draft logos and banners for what's actually going to show up at the top, and we have, it'll be interesting to see how it comes together. Cool. Great. These are eighth hey Paul, graders. I had a Go ahead, Paul. Question yeah. for the group. Yeah. Which is as much as I am really supportive of this idea of a digital learning day, you know, I very much am. I, I just think it's interesting, you know, that that a lot of this effort is focusing around a day. And uh, you know, I, I wanted to pick up on um, a thread that I think is running through a lot of what people are talking about, which is uh, you know, this question of sustainability beyond the day. You know, so I think like, well, what is the importance of having a day? And then what, you know, what does this mean moving forward, you know, beyond, beyond this moment? And it's just you know, um, sort of an Paul, open conversation. Yeah, I was thinking about that, actually. Um, and uh, my approach was kind of a business as usual kind of day. But um, some things are kind of coming uh, to a fore just right around this time. So we're using it as an opportunity. Um, one of my classes in particular has been talking about why they can't use their tools in class. You know, so they've got these powerful things in their pockets, their phones, 
and um, they, uh, you know, they want to use them. And so I toss it out to my media class. So, you know, well, what does this mean? And so they've brainstormed a lot of, or they brainstormed about a month ago, a lot of uh, stories around what school could be. Um, and, and they're realistic too. Like some of them are, they don't want to be wired all the time and they like analog for some stuff and they like books and paper, but um, some of them have been doing stories uh, around that idea of, you know, like what kind of technology could we use in our own way. So I think, you know, my thing on that day, when I mean business as usual, I think there's going to be a lot of posts on youth voices around that topic and um, you know people are doing stories on you know what are the best educational apps that students use right now and so I think what we're planning on doing is documenting just that day um, a day in the life of and, and the day that could be is is our approach I'm, I'm wondering Chris if your students could contact Matt somehow and figure out what they're doing because you know as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've Fred. got a lot of uh go ahead, Chris. Couple kids out there who are interested in, in doing that. So Yeah, that'd be great. Uh let's get together. I mean I'm happy to work with everybody. More merrier. We're really gonna figure stuff out. Fred uh did you want to address that question that Paul O raised or anything else? Go ahead. Fred, how are you doing? Hi. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. It's been a very hectic day. Um, the, the main project that I have going right now that relates to Digital Learning Day is a school-wide uh, staff development training at Brant Saforti Middle School in Santa Cruz, where the entire staff is working on incorporating digital writing in one form and another into their ongoing projects. And I was there today working uh, in small groups on, and, and both of the groups that I was working with expressed interest in incorporating digital storytelling in particular into ongoing projects that they uh, that they already have underway so uh, these are all things that really won't relate to the particular day and in fact i've had most of the feedback that i've had has been why a day <laughs> this goes on all the time and I, I uh, was just thinking, I, what, in a way, I think what we need is a, a celebration of digital life, not not a digital day. Um, the the, uh, the focus on a day, in a way, seems like a, a marketing mistake <laughs> because it it gives that. It, impression that oh this is something that happens on this day and or you need to focus on a particular day rather than focusing on the, the um, integration throughout everything that's going on at your school so any thoughts on that jump in that's something that I think about yeah, once in a while because <laughs> Sorry. Like, I wonder when the place is when, you, when you're when you not talking about, like, digital learning day anymore, and it just becomes more of how things are done. And I think that's something we're getting closer and closer to. When you think about like, what we were saying earlier with the power of what they have in their pocket, and, like, we're almost there. And it's a probably a combination of policies and some infrastructure concerns and things like that. But... I just, I always get the sense that we're just so close to this place where these things are so seamless that, you know, ed tech becomes just ed and it's all just sort of comes together. Right. So. Tom, I'm I, was, I was thinking about Paul's question. Um, and w what Jane Marlick's trying to do in California with uh, the showcase 
is um, uh, she's invited a lot of teachers and all the projects are inviting teachers, but she's also invited uh, legislators, policymakers, um, county office people, uh, people that may not um, have much experience with what a classroom is like these days. So I think that it it's it's a chance. It it is marketing. It's like taking it public for a day. It's an occasion, and um, you know you have to be pretty strategic about it and and show something that can't be done in a day. <laughs> you know, show a way of life for a day. You know, in a day, um, but not you know say we're doing something special today. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see who comes and who shows up and how much they're able to understand of what's, you know, what's going on. I mean, one of the things I want to say is, you know, you have these ideas about college readiness and college writing, and they're pretty much all wrong. <laughs> That's good. Tom, that fits. Let me push that a little bit. How, how do you think a high school teacher could prepare kids for your class that you described? I don't the think they should. Okay. I think they should just teach high school. All right. <laughs> be a great high school teacher. I'll, you know, I don't want people to be prepared. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't have anything to teach. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little smart ass, but um, it's okay. The truth is, I think high school teachers need to pay attention to the high school context, what high school teach, what high school students need, and then I'll, I'll teach the kids in front of me. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Natalie. May I jump in? Please. Sure. I, you know, I I started talking about fifty minutes ago, and I wanted to come back full circle to something I said at the outset, and I feel really strongly about it. I said that I welcome Digital Learning Day because it enabled me to start conversations with a lot of important people that I'm not, I haven't been able to, well, you know, it's a, a really great opportunity. There's something specific and focused that I can direct their attention to. And I want to remind most of you on this chat that you are living in your high-tech world, but the rest of us are still slogging in this low-tech world where there's still a lot of tech phobia, there's, there's the teachers are feeling reluctant, and just, just to kind of give you my reality, I, as soon as I learned about Digital Learning Day, I sent out an email to my principal, to my IT director, to the admin in charge of technology, and to two of the, um, my county office of ed technologists, and I said, this is a great opportunity. I want to be involved. Does anyone have plans? How can we work together? And not one of them, not one of them responded to me like, oh, yeah, here's what we're doing. Here's how we could collaborate. The, the County Office of Ed people said, they both wrote to me back saying, that sounds great, Natalie, but we're too busy to take a lead on anything, so let us know what you have planned. So do you see how... That, that energy and that momentum, it's, it's not there. So I'm, I'm moving ahead, as you can see. I'm forging ahead. I've jumped on Jane Marling's Roadshow Tour, and I'm having this conversation with you. I'm having conversations where I can, but nobody else is talking about it. But because I have a day that I can focus people's energy and attention to, at least for one day, to get those conversations started, I'm, I'm using it as much as I can. You guys, you say, oh yeah, we do this every day, but that's not my reality still. I mean, I've been working on this for 10 years as Paul and Chris <laughs> certainly know, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my piece from where I live up in Title I East Salinas, California school. Oh, so, Paul, I, I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, for Lee especially in, in her program, um, is there, you, you know, how, how do you, how, do you have conversations with your, um, you know, with the, the teachers who are, you're preparing to teach, you know, about those sorts of realities that Natalie's describing? Well, that's the majority of our teachers come from those realities as well, and I was going to jump in with that. Um, what we 
try to do with our teachers is expose them to the tools that are available and a lot of times we'll get pushback well I don't have a laptop for every my school doesn't have a this and that they're not as saturated let's say as other schools um, but they themselves have the access to those technologies and need to understand sort of the underpinnings of them and then they can see in their own areas where they can can flourish and sort of start to implement some of these ideas but I, I, the majority of our students are, are, do not come from heavily tech saturated areas um, and also face these realities as well so that's something that we do we do talk about and that's why I think a, a day to celebrate and I'm, I'm sort of on the I know it's a marketing thing as well um, I think having collected all of these stories across the globe from all of us, all of us coming from different areas, and having that captured somewhere so we can show the lawmakers, so we can show school boards, we can show all these different constituents that sort of come into play in K-12 education, what we do and what is possible. So I think the idea of making it a day, celebrating it, sharing, 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 getting all that stuff out there. Mm. <laughs> stumped everybody here. Mm. Is, uh, you know, one of the things that we did in terms of contributing a resource was we um, spoke with one of our um, teachers in Austin, um, Texas, at the heart of Texas Writing Project, um, Katie McKay, and you know, she wrote a, a post, uh, a blog post for um, the Digital Learning Day site um, that really focuses on this idea of, of working with English learners and, you know, and, and really attempting to, you know, deal with issues of, you know, what has been um, called a digital divide. And, uh, you know, and I, I think that it's, it's uh, just really a great opportunity to, um, you know, for her to be able to voice her concerns, you know, about the, the, um, the, the population that she works with, uh, the students who, uh, you know, in many respects don't have access, um, and then, you know, uh, what it means for her students actually to engage in the use of uh, digital tools as they're composing. So this is just to say that I think, you know, it is a, a if nothing else, it is shining a light um, and providing, a, a, you know, a forum. Paul, I, I want to thank you for saying that because for me this is a social justice issue, that equity and access, so I appreciate you stating that. The other thing that I would mention, related but slightly different perhaps, is that there are lots of bad ways digital learning is happening, <laughs> if I could say that, and I think that's worth mentioning too. You know, there's there's um, all this credit recovery programs and mm. really dead um, kinds of things that we subject mm. kids to on computers. Yeah. And all the testing yeah. and everything is happening through computers. So is there room to talk about, you know, kind of the wrong direction some of the digital learning has taken too? I hope there is. I think nice. I want to jump in. Go ahead. Oh, I'm Andrew. taking it overly. Um, we're actually having that debate in our state legislature today about the credit recovery perfect, perfectly online, entirely online high schools that they have. And it, it is exactly this conversation happening in our state, which is that the governor is saying we want more cyber learning in our schools. And then we have outside interests putting pressure that they want more choice and so i think that there is a real danger in our zeal to push forward on the digital frontier and the rhetoric about 21st century skills and all of all of that attendant ideas that go along with that i think it's really Im important to recognize that there's a lot of ways that this goes wrong mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> there's all kinds of base students are not motivated any longer because they don't you're not utilizing the tools in the best way. So uh, I think that's a really important point. I'm glad you raised it. So we're having a debate on our campus. Um, 
it's uh, between, well, they're trying to do a cost cutting thing by merging faculty development and technology with faculty development and teaching and learning. So you might ask why it wasn't together in the first place, but you know. So the, the technology people are great. I really like them and everything, but they're not teachers. And they don't enter into any kind of professional development with faculty with a question about teaching. They, they, know, they know software pro programs and tools. And they, they show them to you one after another. And we just adopted Blackboard Learn, which is a learning management system. Right? Mm -hmm. And all it is is 200 ways to give students stuff. It's all, like students don't see each other. They don't, they can't post, they can't share. It's a thousand ways. I mean, it's really complex for, for top-down teaching. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. So, um, so, Paul, I wanted to ask um, just a Yeah, question. I mean, the, the phrase that oh, uh, we'll get back. I keep. Go ahead, Fred. Go ahead. I, I was going to say that the phrase that I keep coming back to is telling the computer what to do. That is, so much of what happens with technology has this huge opportunity cost where the kids' time with whatever technology they may have access to gets occupied with these programs that tell the kids this is the way you practice for the standardized tests. These are the drill and kill programs we're going to run you through. There are a few of those programs like Success Maker is the one that that I think of that um, that does have some intelligence built into it so that errors get processed and the next uh, drill and kill question you get is a little smarter than the one before, but it's still basically the computer telling the kid what to do. Mm -hmm. And what kids really need is opportunities to learn how to take charge of the computer and be the one who's Telling the computer, hey, I, I want you to make my ideas compelling to other people. I want to have my, my ideas communicated in an interesting way and giving them those skills rather than kids playing games, have them designing the games. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that, that really are going to give the kids the skills they need to do whatever they want with their lives. And the, the opportunity cost is huge. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I just, I wanted to, uh, so this is a different um, thread, but I wanted to ask a question specifically of, of Matt, um, because the, the my experience with augmented reality was was actually at the Museum of Natural History recently at a, um, it was a, a, a um, it was a Mars exhibit, which was pretty awesome. Um, but uh, it made me wonder uh, the extent to which, and I think w one one aspect of digital learning day is is really uh, beyond just working with educators uh, in the traditional classroom sense. You know, it's this idea of of connecting with external partners, educational institutions, museums, that sort of thing. And so I, I was just wondering if Matt um, has experience in in you know uh, with working with uh, you know a broader range of educators beyond just you know uh, in the class. Uh, with his um, augmented reality project. Yeah, we found a real challenge, um, as you can imagine, with, with emerging technologies like augmented reality, where there isn't really a lot of uh, efficacy data to back up that it's going to raise test scores. We have a hard time getting into a lot of K-12 uh, classrooms. So what, we've, what we do is we partner with after-school clubs. Uh, unfortunately, we have to target high-end schools that really aren't under a huge amount of accountability press. Um, 
and, and that way we can do qualitative case studies. We can kind of study this stuff. Um, there is a lot of opportunity within informal uh, learning environments for things like augmented reality. Unfortunately, I don't think cutting edge technologies like AR um, and, and some of the other technologies that we've discussed today are really going to get a, a strong foothold in the schools that need it most, which is your low socioeconomic schools. But, um, and this kind of piggybacks with what the previous conversation was, but Steve Jobs had an interesting quote um, a, a few years ago, actually, where he said, technology is not going to solve what's wrong with schools. Uh, and, and I think that's a very interesting observation from a very smart guy who spent a lot of energy putting a lot of technology into schools. And uh, I think we go through these cycles every X years where we think the technology is going to come in and change what we do. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't. And we're all very, very disappointed. So I, I don't know if that's, um, if that's insightful in any way. But um, I, I think we have to really look at technology with a skeptical eye sometimes, and even though that I work in ed tech and I, I love it and I, I'm pushing the envelope on at least in a very small way, I think oftentimes we we put too much hope and faith in the fact that technology might actually revolutionize what's happening in most K-12 environments when in reality it's not. Um, and I think that's something that Digital Learning Day is trying to address in the sense of being a, a marketing and a lobbying platform, if you will, to see if lawmakers in Washington, D.C. and at the state level are going to actually put more money into uh, technology and see if we can actually fundamentally change some of the things. But I don't know if I have a salient point there other than um, I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, challenge we all have in front of us, but I, I think it's the conversation and the solutions aren't going to be uh, solved with technology inside of K-12. It'll probably come from somewhere else and then it'll eventually get into K-12. Well, so we need to kind of finish. Um, I think it's okay that we um, brought up hard things at the end. Um, but, um, and, and so it looks like, it looks like um, Digital Learning Day is, is going to be different in lots of different places. Um, looks like People are going to be pushing their own envelopes, which is exciting, um, and celebrating at the same time. And um, as we suggested here at the end, starting to be a little critical as well about what's going on with technology. So sounds like lots of exciting conversations. Um, again, want to remind you that if you would like to continue this conversation, um, you can do it tomorrow night. Um, it's 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern at Blog Talk Radio slash NWP Radio. Um, and if you go to nwp.org, you can find uh, NWP Radio. And if you're not subscribed to that podcast yet, you should. It's, a, it's great to, to see what you guys are doing on there. Um, we want to uh, thank everybody here for coming tonight and um, say that we'll be back next week like we are every Wednesday. Um, next week, uh, Monica Hardy and I are gonna be talking about detox, um, a kind of uh, reflective process that her kids have been doing now for a while and my students have started doing. Um, and so come on back next week. Um, we have been broadcasting here, we wanna say over the EdTech Talk um, network of the World Bridges Network, um, channel of the World Bridges Network. I want to thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier for helping making that happen. Paul, I do want to check back in. Is there anything else that we wanted to mention about NWP and what's going on? Did we miss anything? I uh, know. I think we have it covered, and yeah, I think we have it covered. And uh, I just wanted to thank everyone as well. Um, so this was a really wonderful conversation, and I'm really excited about what's going to be happening over the next few days and then beyond. Great. Thank you all. See you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Night. Night. Good night. Night, Chris. Bye.